Okay, so this video is about if, if I could conceptualize what Microsoft 365 would look like if I could put it on your network, what the tenant would look like, I made up this slide here, okay? And so let me show you a few things. Get my laser pointer. So when we're talking to somebody the first time about their computer network, and they're interested in moving to Microsoft 365, what they've done is they have gotten a system that looks like what I'm showing you here. They, they've, they've gotten their email moved into Office 365. So for them, Office 365 means Exchange Online in Office 365, so they don't have an email server anymore. It means the Office desktop apps, Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, those. And so to get everybody licensed so they don't have to deal with uh, maintaining license keys and things like that anymore. So they got those parts done. But what they still have, they have domain controllers, they have a file server. They're, they're very interested in figuring out how to get their files moved into SharePoint Online or OneDrive. They can't quite get that part figured out. And I have another video about that. But that being said, that's kind of what they're, they're, they're stuck with. They also usually have a basic local backup system. They might have an online backup, but it's never... It's never a great system, and it's not a proper disaster recovery system. And then I'll just give honorable mention that they usually have, or they often have, some sort of business application server, like a legacy Windows application server. Most new companies these days are going to have a, a business application that is web-based, and they're not going to have Windows apps that they're loading on the computer. So for companies that have been around a while, then they're, they're often going to have a SQL server and then often a remote desktop server, i.e. a terminal server, to be able to give people remote access in and that sort of thing. So this is very typical of what the system looks like when we talk to people for the first time. What I wanted to do is give you an idea of what Microsoft 365 looks like if I could put it on your computer network. And so that's what I made up here. So if I could do that, you wouldn't want to, but if I could, it would look something like this. I would buy this huge, big, honking blade server enclosure, and then I would install all of these blade servers inside of them. And then what I would do is I would load up Windows Server on each one of these things, and then I would build the virtual machines, the Windows Server virtual machines, and then I would start loading up the application software inside of this system. So I would load up Azure Active Directory Server, if that was possible, which it's not. But again, these are services. If I could conceptualize what this looks like on your system, I would install Azure Active Directory Server. Then I would configure and install and configure Exchange Server and then SharePoint Server, the Microsoft Phone System, Team Server, Skype for Business Server, Intune Server, OneDrive Server. Azure Information Protection Server, Planner Server, Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection Server, Cloud App Security Server, Yammer Server, Staff Hub Server, and the Subscription Server to manage all of the licensing. I would install. I would have to install all of that on the system, configure it, and get all your users brought into it. And that wouldn't be all. Then I would also need to set up that same system uh, in two other geographic regions at least 500 miles away from each other. So I replicate this system here and all the data to, let's say, let's say this one here was in Chicago. Then maybe this one I would be replicating to San Antonio where the central, South Central data center region is. And maybe I would be replicating this one over into California. But that is more like what we're talking about. If I could put the Microsoft 365 tenant in your company physically and it's worth noting remember going back to this basic local backup system that most um, people when they're calling talk to us for the first time have well when I have Microsoft 365 and I have the tenant I don't need a back from disaster recovery system my data is protected with retention policies and by the nature of how Microsoft 365 works I don't need a disaster recovery system Remember, everything is replicated across the United States. So I think it's also worth pointing out that 
even if you did want to build this system, how much would that run me? I ran some rough numbers on a system like this. I haven't built one like this in my life, but I've run ran rough numbers on it to get the rack, three rack enclosures, to get all the blade servers, to get the software, to get the professional services by the engineers to install all this stuff and configure it. And that's if you could find all these people. You would not be able to do it. Find all these people who could set up all these systems properly. But if you could do that, I would ballpark at around $500,000. And if you manage that in-house, I would ballpark the monthly for the IT talent to do this and maintain it. Again, if you could find them, which you couldn't, $25,000 a month. And I would, if you were outsourcing it, maybe $10,000 a month. And I'm just talking about the back end, by the way. I'm not even talking about supporting the users and their Windows computers and their mobile devices. I'm just talking about the back end, keeping it up, keeping it online, keeping it healthy. So yeah, I would say half a million dollars and then um, $10,000 a month to $25,000 a month, depending if you insource it or outsource it. And the interesting thing is this system, you're going to configure it for peak demand, not as much as you need when you need it. And you're going to refresh this thing every five years. How's that sound? Whereas Microsoft 365 is, this the, which is the best system that Microsoft makes. And Microsoft manages the hardware. They patch and update and upgrade the software. And they are responsible for keeping it online. We are responsible for maintaining our data and the notifications and alerts and all this stuff that comes off the system that affects us and our end users. Microsoft does not manage that, that's up to us. But that system that Microsoft gives us is $57.50 per user per month. That is the top system that Microsoft makes. And you can add or remove employees as the needs of the business change. And you never have a refresh project ever again. And that's why I tell people all the time, once you make the migration into Microsoft 365, it's maintenance. You never have to do, we're not going to do this again in five years. So again, compare if we were to build out this system, spend half a million dollars, $10,000 to $25,000 a month just to maintain this system, and we're going to refresh this every five years compared to Microsoft 365 E5, which is $57.50 per user per month.